Hi everybody, bet you're wondering what those four letters are that I keep talking about, the I and FJ, what they mean, the meaningless letters that I keep rambling about. They are anything but meaningless. They describe who you are. Those three, or those four, sorry, four letters. Those four letters describe who you are. They are your personality type. It describes how you go about your day, navigate your day, taking in information, coming to conclusions, making decisions. That's what those four letters mean. And it gets really, really interesting. Understanding those four letters and how they work together will help you with problem solving, navigating relationships. Um, it'll help you understand what motivates you. Um, it'll help you identify your natural strengths and also identify potential areas for growth, some weaknesses. Um, and then once you start understanding the letters and how they work, you start looking at other people and you're like, oh, well, I think they're this personality type. So it really helps you understand other people and start appreciating them for their differences because those differences are actually gifts and you can start seeing how you can utilize other people's gifts. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to explain to you what those four letters INFJ are and where they have come from. So I think it's going to be quite interesting. So thanks for joining. If we haven't met before, my name is Trina Bretnell. I like showing up and sharing all things introverted mostly INFJ related or INF because I'm an INFJ myself. Um, we're a rare personality type and there's not a lot of resources out there. And things that seem to work for other people don't usually work for an INFJ and there's reasons for that because we're different and we go about things very differently. So I thought that I would show up and start sharing just tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and hopefully help one other person. So thank you for joining. Now getting into it, I'm gonna share a little bit of background information. It was Carl Jung, psychologist that started studying people and he came to the conclusion that people use basically eight behavioral patterns to navigate the world around them. So everybody in the whole world uses basically eight behavioral patterns. They can fall into one of the eight behavioral patterns. Now, mother and daughter team, Catherine Briggs, Catherine Cook Briggs and her daughter, Isabel Briggs Myers, built off of that, off of what Carl Jung had discovered, and they developed the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. Now that is based on the eight basic behavioral patterns. They took and they created 16 different personality types based on that. So those 16 personality types are the four letters that I talk about. Um, there's 16 different ones. There's eight extroverted and there's eight introverted. So that would explain why if you're an introvert and you've come across another introvert, you could question whether they're introverted or not because they're very different from you. But that's why is because there's eight different types of introvert. I found that very interesting because I'm quite a deep introvert and I've come across people that claim to be introverts and I'm like, I, I don't really think that you're an introvert. We're very different. But when I took my certification for the Myers-Briggs, I was like, oh, well, that's why I questioned that person's introversion. They are an introvert, but they're not the same type that I am. So, and same with extroverted. Extrovert, there's eight different types of extrovert personality types as well, and each one is very different. It gets really fascinating though, because within each type, you can be very different. So I'm an INFJ. I can meet up with another and I and FJ. We would have some similarities, but also be very different because life experience influences that, right? So that's what they did. They came up with um, 16 personality types with those behavioral patterns and the mental processes. So basically, not sure if I mentioned this, it's how you go about your day. That's what it is. It's an easy way to describe how you mentally function your day. So how you're taking in information, taking that information and coming to decisions, coming to conclusions, um, and also how you organize your day, how you approach your, the outside world. That's what that personality type. So it's, it's quite useful because it's what we use every day. It's our everyday life, and that's how it explains, how to explain our everyday, how we, how we use our brain throughout our day every day is what I'm trying to say. All right, the behavioral patterns and the mental processes are... Extrovert, introvert, um, that would be the E and the I. So I and FJ, that's the I, that means introvert. And then we have sensing and intuition. So the opposite, sensing, and then the opposite of that is intuition. Sensing is the S, intuition is an N. Then next we have thinking and then feeling. Thinking T, feeling F. 
The next one is judging and perceiving. The judging the J and the perceiving the P. Now, before we get going on this, feeling, if you have the feeling preference, if that's what your brain prefers to use most of the time, that doesn't mean you're emotional at all. It's not related to that. Although feelers tend to be very empathetic, but they don't have to be. So it's not always what it, you think it's going to be when I say feeling, a feeler. It's not that they're emotional and they need thicker skin. It has nothing to do with that. And judging is not being judgmental. You're not judging people. It's how we approach our outside world. So introvert, extrovert is how we direct and receive energy, information, that sort of thing. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that you're outgoing. It doesn't mean that you're super quiet. It has nothing to do with that. It's all about where we get our energy, where we direct our energy, um, and how we receive the information. Next, the sensing and intuition is how we take in information. That explains how we're taking in all the information around us in a day. Then we come to the thinking and the feeling. And this is how we decide, how we make decisions and come to conclusions based on that information that we have taken in. So that's why I said it has nothing to do with being too emotional or being a deep thinker. It's how we decide and come to conclusions. Now, the judging and the perceiving is how we approach our outside world. And that one's quite interesting because that, the judging and the perceiving, you can actually identify in people very easily when I explain a little bit of it. So the INFJ is introvert, intuitive, feeling, judging, INFJ. So that's what those four letters mean. Now, it's not just those four letters added together and that's who you are. It's how those four letters interact with each other. And it doesn't matter what personality type you are, even if you're an extrovert, an ENFJ, it's how all those four letters interact with each other. Now, it gets a super interesting again, because an INFJ, those are the four letters that we use the most. Those behavioral patterns are the four that we use the most. Everybody uses all eight of them. We are capable of using all eight of them. And we do use all eight of them at one point in our day. It's just that our brain will automatically go to one preference first. It's kind of like the way I describe it to my clients is it's left hand, right hand. If you're left handed, you grab a pencil with your left hand and you start writing without even really thinking about it. That's just what you do. But if you break your left hand, you learn to write with your right hand. You can do it. Even if you don't break your left hand, you can still write with that right hand. We've all tried it in school, right? We can do it. It feels awkward. It feels sloppy, maybe clumsy. It's, it's weird. That's how it feels when we're using a preference that's not our preferred preference and preference. When I say preference, that's that's what I mean uh, about the sensing, the intuition, the thinking, the feeling. That's a preference. Um, when I refer to preference, that's what I'm talking about. I think I might have left that part out. So we all have the preferences that we prefer, but we are capable of using all eight of them. And that's what gets really interesting in um, type development, which I'm going to mention a little bit in a, in a short time here. So INFJ, the introvert, intuitive, feeling, judging. That's, that's what we have. That's what we have going on. I'm just reading my notes here because I don't want to forget anything and leave you guys confused. So the introversion and the INFJ, um, that's, that, what would that look like? That would be like focusing on our inner world. We gain energy by thinking of ideas, memories, reflection, experience. Very introspective, right? That's introversion. It has nothing to do with how outgoing we are. We prefer written communication for the most part. We tend to be private and contained, focused in depth um, on just, a, we're, we focus in depth on just a few hobbies or ideas. Whereas like the extrovert will have many hobbies and ideas, but we focus on just a few and we get right into depth with those. That's what an introvert would look like. Now, if you don't relate to any of that, but you're an introvert, that's fine. I just picked a few. Um, there's many, many more. Um, intuitive. That is the next function that we use. This is actually our first, first function. This is what our brain will do right off the start. 
intuitive. It's um, introverted intuition. Has nothing to do with the introversion I just talked about. That's a whole video for another time. So we're just going to say intuitive right now, intuition. Um, you like to look at the big picture. We like to look at the big picture, um, see relationships and connections between facts, um, look for possibilities, imagine, um, create. We're usually intuitives are very creative, uh, focus on patterns, um, and look for deeper meaning to things. That's the intuition. Now, an example of intuition versus sensing, because that's the opposite, is the sensors. Um, in, we'll, we'll say buying a house. You're going out house shopping, and intuitive will walk into this house, and they will look at it, and they will see the potential it has. Okay, oh, it's going to be great. We can do this, this, and this with it. It's going to be awesome. The sensor is going to walk into that same house, and they're going to see everything that needs repaired. They're going to start calculating the cost of the repairs and if it's going to be worth it. They're not really going to see the big picture. They're going to look at the here and now. That's the difference between us, okay? Next, we have feeling, the F in the INFJ. That is when we come to a decision, we always think about who it's going to affect around us, ourselves included, right? Um, usually feelers are empathetic, super empath. So if you're talking about an empath, chances are they're a feeler. Um, they love praise and support to others. They love giving praise and support. They always love helping other people. And they're guided by personal and social values, usually highly compassionate, that sort of thing. That's, that's a feeler. So an example of this would be in an office. Um, making a decision, a feeler will think about everybody involved in this office, who it's going to affect, and they're going to base their decisions on that. A thinker is going to think about what's best for the company. They're not going to think of each person individually. That's the difference. And that can actually be a struggle in an office. If you're a, a feeler and you're working with thinkers, because quite often thinkers get labeled cold-hearted and feelers get labeled... Um, what is it, wearing their heart on their sleeve? They need thicker skin, that sort of thing. Um, next, we have judging. And no, you're not being judgmental. You're not judging people. It's how we perceive our outside world, right? How we go about it. So that's judges are planners. Um, we make decisions and conclusions and move on really quickly. We like to do that very quickly, but we like all the information given to us. Um, we're, usually we're scheduled usually pretty organized, usually systematic. Perceivers, on the other hand, are more sport spontaneous. That's the best way to describe them. They're not usually super organized. They like to just fly by the seat of their pants. Remember I said it's really easy to pick out the judging, the judges and the perceivers, because judges are planners, organized, don't really like to be spontaneous, whereas the perceivers, they like to be spontaneous. So the INFJ our very first in type dynamics, talking about how those letters interact. I'm just going to touch on this tip of the iceberg. The first, the first preference that we automatically go to when we're in our day, any part of our day really, is that intuition. That's the first thing that our brain is going to do without us even thinking about it. Second is feeling. Third is thinking. And the fourth is sensing. Think of it as a car. You've got your driver, your passenger, and then the back seat. Driver, that's in charge. They're taking you everywhere, right? You're like your tour guide. That's intuition. And it's amazing how many INFJs do not know how to use that intuition because they've never been allowed to. Society does not like it, especially if you were raised North American. Society does not like intuition. They think it's woo woo because they don't understand how it works. It's not woo woo at all. Next is sitting in the passenger seat is the feeling. It's extroverted feeling. I'm not going to get into what I mean when I say introverted intuition, extroverted feeling. That's a video for another day. But those are your first two preferences that you use all the time as an INFJ. So those are the ones that you really want to research and find out about. Uh, example of introverted intuition, if I haven't given this, I don't think I have yet. Um, because it is a little bit different than just regular intro intuition. Um, introverted intuition works as if we, if you were in an office and a problem came up, you're going to want to just sit there and think about this problem inside and out, probably overthink it, go down that rabbit hole 
and come to a decision or I guess uh, an answer on your own with the deep thought. You're going to get right into deep thought. Um, you might start connecting unrelated pieces to a puzzle, but they actually are quite related. That's why you're connecting them. But for you to be able to explain when you come with your answer to your supervisor or whatever it may be, you may not be able to explain how you came to that because those pieces actually just don't relate. But in your brain, they're related. And if you let yourself think about it, you'll be able to explain how that those pieces are related. That's a video for another day. It's super interesting and it's very beneficial if you can, when you start to utilize that introverted intuition. If you're not, and if you don't know how to use your introverted intuition, it can actually be a struggle and it can be a nightmare. And lots of INFJs struggle with that. And that's okay. That's just how society has groomed us. Anyway, that's what I had for you for INFJ. When I say those four letters, this is what I'm talking about in a nutshell. It goes much deeper. It gets super interesting because it can actually explain how you react to stress. So if you don't like how you're reacting to stress and you really want to change, it would be great to understand your personality type because it will describe how you react to stress. Um, personality type sticks. When you have a certain specific personality type, you die with that type. However, you do develop other preferences. Now, remember I said INFJs first, their first preference they're going to use is the intuition, second feeling, third thinking, fourth sensing. Where did I get that from, right? That's not the thinking, the sensing is not even in INFJ, but we use it. So you can get really good at using those. Um, I'm a INFJ, obviously. So I use the judging. I got really good with my perceiving preference, um, being spontaneous when I have to. I'm scheduled. I'm a creature of habit. But because of the jobs that I have done over the years, I can be spontaneous if I have to. I can do things without making a list and organizing if I have to. I got really good at it. I also got good at using my sensing preference because I did lots of office work. Uh, sensors are kind of drawn to the office. They like, they like working in an office. So I worked a lot around a lot of sensors. So I had to get good using my sensor preference, my sensing preference. However, my intuition is the first one that I'm going to go to unless I actually think about it and want to use my sensing. I hope that was clear. I hope you found this interesting. I've kept you long enough. We're going on 18 minutes. Um, this is it in a nutshell. It's personality type based on the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Um, I am a certified Myers-Briggs practi practitioner. I find this stuff so fascinating. So if you're unsure about your personality type, hit me up, email me, find me over on Facebook, Instagram, send me a private message, and I would love to work with you. It's super interesting, and it's so helpful to understand who you are and why you do the things you do, why you think this way, why you react this way, why this type of learning isn't working for you. It gets so interesting. Anyway, guys, that's what I have for you. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please, please like my video. If you think this would help somebody, one of your friends, a neighbor, somebody you work with, feel free to share it. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel because you never know what I'm going to be talking about. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys again another time. Bye for now.